A man is so bossy. It's always follow me or, or stay here. The other day she told me, chew your Cayo Pinto before you swallow. <laughs> can you believe it? Knowing your sister? Yeah, I can. The enemy could strike at any time. I can't sit around taking my sweet time eating. I'm a Sandinista, just like the others. I don't need some woman telling me what to do. Some woman? She's your sister, and she's doing the best she can to fill your father's shoes. I know, I know, but lately she hasn't been doing so good. I should be strong for her. Now you're talking. Sorry to hear about your dad. Don't be. He was, he is a guerrilla warrior. We pledge our lives to our country and its people. I'm ready to die too if I have to. You sure? You better believe it. Like mi viejo used to say. Patria o muerte. <laughs> che said it first. My dad used to tell us all kinds of stories. About General Sandino and his fight against La Guardia. About my mom before she left us. You didn't want to go with her? It's not like that. La Revolución comes first, that's all. You must wish you could see her, though. I don't know. But I know I'll see her again when this is all over. Somehow, I, I just know it. When I do, me and my mom and papa are all going to live together again. At least... At least that's what I thought. Now, I... Hang in there, Chico. Your sister needs you. Okay. Have you ever heard, shoot, coward? You're only going to kill a man. Hmm. Che's last words. He'd been captured in Bolivia and said it to the soldiers just as they were about to execute him. El Che. He was something, wasn't he? Coming up with a line like that knowing he was about to die. After the Cuban Revolution, Che gave up his position in the new government to aid in revolutions in other countries. He knew he could die at any time. And he was ready for it. Me? I couldn't even take a little torture. But you've been reborn as an hombre nuevo. Right, Chico? Right. Don't you ever get lonely, living away from your mom? Not really. My compas are my family now. A lot of them are from the same village as me. So you had plenty of people to take care of you. Take care of me? I'm a warrior, like any other Sandinista. We look out for each other. That is how it works. Uh, sorry. Guess I misspoke. Now we're scattered because of that colibri. Wonder where everybody went. Hey, Snake. If you see any friendly prisoners, please, you gotta get them out, okay? Those guys are solid, every one. You could use them in MSF. Hey, Snake. Are there any jobs for me here at Mother Base? I can do anything. You don't have to work, you know. Ah, don't treat me like a kid. I'm a man now. Okay, then. What are you good at? Hmm, let me think. Ah, uh, everything! Pull me on any team. I can pull my own weight. <laughs> well, you are young. You'll probably be a fast learner. I'll think of something. Anything you need, boss. You'll see. I can fight as good as anybody. <sighs> hey, what's with all this sighing? You're not your usual self. Oh, Snake. Something on your mind? Huh? No. No, no, not really. Not, I, I guess... Hey, Snake. Uh-huh. Girls are funny, you know? You can never tell what they're thinking. They're, they're always doing their own thing. Maybe they really are different from us men. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this about now? Chico, do you have a crush on somebody? No. It's not that. I, I just... What? Go ahead. You can talk to me. Whenever I talk to Paz, my heart starts pounding and, and everything I say comes out wrong. Paz? Uh, I guess she is pretty close to your age. That ever happened to you, Snake? Well, sure. Happens to everybody. Well, how do I talk to her? That is a tough one. Um, why don't you try uh, talking to her like you... Talk to everybody else. No, it doesn't work. I freeze up every time I'm around her. Our eyes meet and, and my face starts burning for some reason. Well, it's like living on the battlefield. You just have to get used to it. Um, her. You're nervous at first, but the more you're out there, the more natural it feels. Get your courage up and go talk to her more often. Oh, okay. Man, 
Girls are more full of mysteries than you and Mays. Oh, you got that right. Chico, I heard you saw Paz trying to sabotage Zeke before she activated. I, I should have stopped her. If only I hadn't run away. I could have captured her before she got inside. If I'd done that, she'd still be here. She was carrying a gun. Probably trained to use it, too. Don't blame yourself. You couldn't have stopped her anyway. You were unarmed. I could have at least talked to her. If I'd promised not to tell anyone, Paz wouldn't have gone and done what she did. It's just... It's just I was so shocked. I, I, I panicked. Ran away. Chico, when you saw Paz, she was trying to sabotage it, right? Huh? Well... Yeah. And right after that, she took control of it, tried to make me surrender. Something doesn't add up. Why would she sabotage Zeke when she was about to use it against me? What? Her actions were inconsistent. Even for a spy, if she wanted to destroy Zeke, she could have done it and run away. But if her goal was to steal Zeke, she'd have no motive to sabotage it. I, I don't know. Maybe your seeing her caused her to change her plan. Uh, I don't get it. The supply staging point is at the eastern foot of Irasu. There's a rail terminal there. They'll probably transfer the nuke from the train onto a truck. Gotcha. I'll have to catch them while they're moving the cargo. But you might run into El Basilisco. Keep your eyes peeled, Snake. An 80-foot tall walking behemoth. The CIA's new weapon? Mm, could be. Too bad it's not actually a dinosaur. I think... They're testing it up at the base, on top of the mountain. I met a guy in Russia who described it as a metal gear linking infantry and artillery. Metal gear? Hmm. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like maybe it's connected to everything that's happening here somehow. The nukes? You don't think... What else could it be? If it is up there, I'll just have to improvise. Either way, I won't know until I get there. Watch your back, Snake. There's a river in the mountains north of the village. You'll see a water pipe running across that's got a walkway you can use as a bridge. I guess they built it to carry water from the hydroelectric plant. To get there, though, you gotta get past the barricade north of the prison. Got it. El Basilisco supposedly lives in the gorge up there. So be careful you don't get distracted and fall in the river. The Basilisco? Not the big monster I saw. I mean, the real Basilisco. <laughs> a real one? The legendary king of snakes? More like a lizard, I guess. It walks on top of the river. A uh, lizard that walks on water? Man, you should see it. It's not that big, though. Only about one bite along. Pretty good size for a lizard. Yeah, but not nearly as big as a dinosaur. So there's a real basilisco that lives in the river? I'm only saying I heard stories from people who said they saw it. But I know lots of places to find it in Nicaragua. Do you want to go have a look? I don't have time for sightseeing. Uh, you don't like lizards? It's not that. I just think snakes taste better. Who said anything about taste? How about you? You like them? Not that way. They do look kind of like dinosaurs, though. You don't think that's cool? No, they're both reptiles, yeah. But there's a big difference size-wise. I'll bet there are still big ones around somewhere. They say mammals multiplied and ate up their eggs. But they can't all be gone. They've got to exist somewhere out there. Hmm. Dinosaur eggs, huh? And animals are always evolving, right? Maybe they evolved so much, they don't even look like dinosaurs anymore. Then you can't really call them dinosaurs, can you? I guess not. Yeah, you're right. Dinosaurs have got to be big. Irasu has more than one crater, because he's erupted so many times. I heard most of them filled up with rainwater and became lakes. Calderas, huh? Calderas? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Hey, I got an idea. When you get to the lake, can you keep an eye out for weird animals for me? People all over the world tell stories about giant monsters living in lakes. Nessie in Loch Ness, Nahuelito in Argentina, Ogopogo in Canada. I can hardly keep track of them all. They say that all these sightings prove dinosaurs do still exist. But crater lakes are isolated. They're not connected to rivers. Yeah, but do you know Mokele Mumbembe in the Congo River? He can walk on land. So maybe they moved there from some other lake. Huh. You sure know a lot about UMAs. There used to be a guy in El Frente who was a hunter. He taught me lots of things. 
He even said he once went to a place called Isla del Monstruo. A hunter on Isla del Monstruo. Someday, I'm going to be a hunter and catch some rare animals. Right after we restore peace to our land, of course. Did you ever hear of the Loch Ness Monster? Now that one I know. Pretty much everyone's heard of old Nessie. Great, so I don't have to explain. I think she's a long-lost dinosaur, don't you? Um, sure. Why not? One of the compas gave me a book about it, with photos. It looks exactly like the plesiosaur. Then why does it only live in Loch Ness? Well, it probably got cut off from the ocean. Back when Loch Ness was part of the ocean, some plesiosaurs became trapped there when the climate changed. There weren't any mammals there, so no natural predators. Today's Nessie is descended from those plesiosaurs. Then wouldn't it make sense for there to be monsters in other lakes with similar climates? Exactly. That's why there's been giant monster sightings in a bunch of other places. Like Nahuelito and Ogopogo. I don't know if there's one in Irasu too, but I know there's definitely something living in Lago Cosipolca. You mentioned the Nahuelito. What is it? It's a plesiosaur that lives in Lago Nahuel Huapi in Argentina. It's described a little differently, but I'm sure it's basically the same creature as Nessie. Except for one thing. What? Well, according to one theory, it's the result of a nuclear test back in the 50s. What? There's no record of a nuclear test in Argentina in the 50s. At the time, the president, General Juan Perón, was pushing hard to industrialize the country. I wouldn't be surprised if he conducted a top-secret nuclear test before he was overthrown in a coup. Mm, sounds a little far-fetched to me. You think? Then maybe Nahuelito really is a dinosaur. No, I didn't say that... I mean, it's really pretty obvious. Wait a minute. Thanks for clearing that up, boss. <laughs> dinosaur. What about the Ogopogo? And... What kind of name is that, anyway? Ogopogo is a monster that lives in Okanagan Lake, in Canada. I guess it's an Indian name, because it's a legend passed down by the Indians. Uh, a legend, huh? Well, then it's probably not... There's written records of it, too. The first one was in 1872, and there's been more sightings since the start of the 20th century. Uh-huh. You starting to get into UMA's two snake? Yeah, maybe. UMA hunting. Now that's a real man's adventure. What do you say, Snake? After Nicaragua's at peace again? You want to go exploring together? Well, we'll see. Might not be such a bad life. Mokele Mumbembe lives in the Congo River. There's nothing mysterious about it, though. It's already been confirmed as a real living dinosaur. The local people know all about it. And when they were shown a drawing of a brontosaurus, every one of them said it was Mokele Mumbembe. Hmm. When peace returns to Nicaragua, I want to go to the Congo myself. Oh, the revolutionary movement in the Congo ended in failure, you know. Yeah, I know. I wish we could do something to help, but Africa's awfully far away. Africa. I wonder if El Che ever saw Mokele Mumbembe. I wonder if I will. Well, best to take care of business here before daydreaming about Africa. Yeah, I guess you're right. Chico, you know much about cloud forests? Mm, not that much. All I know is there's a world of difference between a rainy rainforest and a foggy cloud forest. But they have some things in common. But like, for instance, you gotta watch out for poison dart frogs. Both rain and cloud forests have high humidity, so they're perfect environments for frogs and other amphibians. I mean, it's not like just touching a strawberry poison dart frog or a dying dart frog is going to kill you. But don't eat them, no matter how hungry you get. I can get all the rations I need from Mother Base. No jungle food for me this time. Seriously? You're not disappointed you don't get to eat wild animals? <laughs> what do you think I am? <laughs> Just kidding. In Colombia, though, there's a frog. The golden dart frog that's lethal to the touch. How do you know all this? Come on. Don't you think poisonous animals are cool? Not if you get poisoned by one. Well, obviously. One more thing. When you get to the forest, be on the lookout for Bigfoot. I... I... think I'll be okay there. <laughs> Bigfoot is an ape man that lives in the Rocky Mountains. In the local Indian language, he's known as Sasquatch. And get this, he's over three bara. Can you believe that? So, he's kinda like a gorilla? Completely different. 
Even the biggest gorillas only get to about two vara, and they walk on their knuckles. Bigfoot's big, and he walks on two feet, like people. So, he's more man than ape? Probably. His ancestors must have split off from humans at some point. Like, before they started using tools and stuff. Yeah, but... Aren't the Rockies kind of far away from here? Eh, not that far. According to Darwin, humans came all the way over here from Africa. Plus, there have been sightings in Venezuela of an ape-man called Mono Grande. Costa Rica has tons of plant and animal species. So I'd expect there to be at least one kind of ape-man. At least? Gotta admit, I've never heard of Mono Grande. Yeah, he's not as famous as Bigfoot. He's similar, but he lives in Venezuela. He's not that big, less than two vara, but he's way more ferocious than Bigfoot. Huh. I wonder just how mean he is. Like, like when he catches his prey, does he punch it to death? That's the law of the wild. You catch your prey, you kill it, and you eat it. Yeah, 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 but punching is way more ferocious than biting. Well, maybe it seems that way, because that's what humans do. You really love UMAs, don't you, Chico? You know what I think? I think your maze should be dangerous. Otherwise, where's the fun in hunting them? Did you see a quetzal snake? Yep. What do you think? Did it look like a snake? Huh? No, it didn't look like a snake. Oh, really? Must be different from the Quetzalcoatl, then. Quetzalcoatl? A winged snake from the Mayan and Aztec legend. A winged snake? <laughs> Weird, right? I bet it's UMA. Amanda and everybody says Quetzalcoatl is a Quetzal in the form of a god. But there's no way anybody mistake a snake for a bird. I think the legend of Quetzalcoatl came first. Somebody saw it and adopted it as their god before they saw the Quetzal. After that, somebody saw a bird that looked like the image of the god, and so they named it Quetzal. You mean it happened the other way around? Well, if you ask me, the Quetzalcoatl was probably a pterosaur that survived. I mean, it's got wings and, and it's a reptile. So it probably looks kind of like a snake, right? Pterosaurs live on in Africa even today. They're called the Congamato and the Elitziao. So it makes sense that there'd be pterosaurs on the American continent too, and that they survived until the Mayan and Aztec eras. Wow. Oh, lucky for us, they're not still around today. Who says they aren't? The dinosaurs supposedly died out 65 million years ago, and the Aztec civilization only rose about 600 years ago. If they managed to survive 65 million years, Surely they couldn't be wiped out in 600. Pterosaurs survive today in the African countries of Cameroon and Congo. Each tribe calls them by a different name, like Congomato or Litsiao. There sure are a lot of dinosaurs running around the Congo. Well, a lot of the land hasn't been settled by humans yet. They've survived all this time, just undiscovered by man. But they're finding fossils in America, too. This one they found three years ago in Texas had a wingspan of more than 12 meters. If I saw a gigantic pterosaur like that, I'd probably call it a god too. Yup, I'm sure that's what the Quetzalcoatl really is. A base disguised as a mine? Ah, <sighs> we never made it that far. I don't know what kind of place it is, but you better be careful, just in case. I plan to. I've heard that the American army keeps dead alien bodies and UFOs in secret bases. <laughs> Aliens. There are billions of stars in space. You've got to think that at least a few have civilizations more advanced than ours. I'll bet they visit Earth in UFOs. In 1947, the Army actually announced that they had caught a flying disc-shaped object near Roswell, New Mexico. Maybe you don't know about it, but those Army guys, they all know. Oh, well, you don't say. Anyway, there's no telling what kind of mystery weapons they might have stashed up there. Watch your back. Apparently, UFOs are connected to cattle mutilations. Cattle mutations? No, 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 no. Not mutations. Mutilations. It's a word I'd never heard before. People have been reporting their livestock dying in mysterious ways near the same places where UFOs have been sighted. They say the bodies are drained of blood and the eyeballs and sexual organs are gouged out. Well, when you leave a corpse cut open in a field somewhere, the ground soaks up the blood. Yeah. But supposedly these cows weren't cut up by any man-made means. Maybe maggots got to them. In some cases, they detected radiation. Radiation? Even in our own town, we had goats that died in strange ways. Some said they saw a monster. A lizard on two legs covered in spines from its head all the way down its back. 
I wonder if that's what the aliens look like. Or if it was some pet they brought with them. Either way, doesn't sound like a very advanced civilization to me. Well, if you see one, tell it I said hi. Sure. If it speaks human. UFOs kidnap people, too. You know, alien abductions. You've heard of the heel abduction, right? That couple back in the 60s? So when I first saw the Colibri, I thought it was a UFO. Ah, the Fulton recovery. I know those guys are working with the aliens, even if they wouldn't let me see them. Well, you better not get caught again, or they'll be experimenting on you. <laughs> I'd take that over torture. What do you think they look like? Completely bald, maybe, with, with gray skin and big black eyes? Or maybe they're four vara tall and wear skirts? I kind of doubt it. I'll give you one thing, though. I've never seen anything move like that. Oh, maybe the CIA really did make contact. You see? It's true! You want to know something? I once met an alien cat. Uh, an alien cat? Yep. It was dark out, so I couldn't see too well. But it was a cat with a huge long tail. Its eyes shined in the dark, too. Most cats' eyes do. At first, I thought it was a regular cat. But then, he started talking to me. Inside my head. Inside your head? He said his name was Altargoso El Baki Munudad. He'd come to Earth from the Andromeda Galaxy to check out Earth's nuclear weapons. The Andromeda Galaxy? Mankind's barely made it to the moon. We couldn't possibly launch nukes that far. El Baki said he was watching over us to make sure we don't destroy ourselves with nukes until the day we humans are ready to join the Space Federation. Hmm. It's a shame. This is supposed to be the era of detente. And still we've got people pulling stunts like bringing nukes into peaceful countries. If something ever went wrong and set off a chain reaction of retaliation... I know. This planet could destroy itself at any time. Snake, is it true you took a picture of El Colibri? Yep. Got it right here. Whoa! It's like an actual UFO! I knew it! Los Yankees are working with the aliens. Uh, I know it kind of looks that way, but... Hey, Snake, can you make me a copy of that? Well, I don't see why not. What for? People pay good money for this stuff. We can use it to raise money for MSF. <laughs> sure, kid. You go out and get us a good price for it. You don't believe me, do you? I'll get the money. You'll see. Snake, Leshen has it. A place called Isla del Monstruo is near Costa Rica. Isla del Monstruo? It was discovered in the 18th century by Caribbean pirates sailing over to the Pacific. And the island in Treasure Island is based on one near Costa Rica, too. Ah, uh, Treasure Island. I remember reading that. You've read it, too? Ah, oh, it makes things easier. In Nicaragua, we, too, have a story about a group of pirates that encountered a flying monster out at sea. Some even say they landed on this monster island, though we still don't know exactly where it is. That's the reason I've always wanted to come to Costa Rica. Ha, <laughs> I see. Ooh, ooh, I heard another story about a talking cat that lives somewhere in Costa Rica. They say it'll take you to this place. Oh, mm, interesting stuff. Wanna know more about the island? Maybe later. If I'm headed that way, you can fill me in. Okay, just let me know. Chico, I, uh, I met that talking cat. The legendary Trenya? Really? Trenya, yeah, that's what it called itself. Is it famous? In certain circles, yeah. I'm still having trouble believing it. I never thought I'd be talking to an animal one day. What a world. Amazing you could understand his language. Well, uh, picking up the local lingo is one of the basics of intelligence work. That's what makes you the boss, boss. Hey, say something in Trenya's language, will you? Uh, meow. Uh, meow. Uh, meow, meow, meow. Wow. I have no idea what you're saying. Of course you wouldn't. So, so what did Trenya say? Uh, it said it would take me to that island you talked about. <gasps> really? Oh, oh, take me to a bus, please, please! I know you must be excited, but we don't know what's out there. Could be dangerous. I'll scout it out first. Ah, no fair. Come on, Chico. This isn't as cut and dry as you think. You can come next time, depending on what I find. I'll take some photos if I get the chance. Sorry, kid, but that's life. Apparently, 
There are other cats that talk besides Trenya on Isla del Monstruo. There's more of them? Yep. They're called the felines. But supposedly they don't ever come to Costa Rica. You should try talking to them if you spot them. Who knows what kind of stuff they have to say. Yeah, just when you think things can't get any crazier. Also, the felines are nice to humans. So you be sure and be nice back. Don't you go attacking them or anything. I would never hurt a defenseless little kitty. I used to have this book full of pirate lore. It had the story about Rathalos, king of the skies. Most accounts describe it as a dragon with wings, or a wyvern. A wyvern? A two-legged dragon. Vlad the Impaler's coat of arms had one on it. Yeah, and he was a model for Count Dracula. There are reports of ships being attacked out in the middle of the ocean. So Rathalos must be able to fly great distances. And what's more, Rathalos is said to breathe fire. Breathe fire? An animal like that can't possibly be real. We're talking about a monster, Snake. Forget what you think you know. Tigrex is a flying dragon just like Rathalos. But it's good at moving around on land, too. It can blast you with rocks from a distance or rush at you with incredible speed. People have seen it on land? See, si. It's said that these two lady pirates, Anne and Mary, visited Isla del Monstruo. It was there that they did battle with Tigrex. Anne was quite a marksman, wasn't she? Must have been a heck of a battle. I wish I'd been there. You know, I'm not so bad with guns myself. I've already seen how good you are. Anne and Mary also saw little dinosaurs running around the island. Velocipres? Yup. As you'd expect, they're very nimble, but no match for a firearm. You wouldn't want to get surrounded by them, though. I'll bet. Nobody wants to be outnumbered in battle. Right. Your best move would be to make sure they cannot encircle you. Well, stealth is the basis of all solo sneaking missions. While it makes battle tougher, working alone has its advantages when it comes to infiltration. That's what makes you the boss, boss. You don't need any advice from me. Not bad for an old-timer, eh, Chico? <laughs> nope. Still, be careful. Have you heard the legend about the dinosaur that came back to life as a zombie and attacked people? Zombie? You mean the living dead? Yeah. Dinosaurs may be extinct, but technically it would be possible for one to come back to life as a zombie. Not so fast. Dinosaurs were real. Zombies, not so much. What are you talking about, boss? Zombies have been used as slaves on Haitian plantations for years. In Haiti, they've handed down a secret zombie powder for generations. Really? People from long ago must have used that same stuff on dinosaur remains. But dinosaurs had been extinct for millions of years before the first humans... That hypothesis has to be wrong. In any case, this zombie was incredibly powerful. Its name was Gear Rex. They say nothing could kill it. Some say its bodily fluids would burn right through your flesh. Then the spines that fell off its back would impale you. The pain made even worse by the deafening roar rattling every bone in your body. You sure it wasn't just some really strong monster? Who knows what kind of dinosaurs were out there? We could be talking about something strong enough to resist small arms fire. Are you afraid of zombies, boss? No, I just find the whole thing hard to believe.